all right you guys I am back go ahead and please um, go ahead and share oh lord I got I got oral y'all that's the oral I anointed myself y'all saw it look it's, it's dripping down yes I anoint myself before I get on here I anoint my ears I didn't even I looked I said what is that that was the oral coming down I ain't lying oh wow. honey spirits is spirits they'll come through this dog on live I know they're always gonna fall like that hold on <laughs> how y'all doing praise God so let me get back on track. Um, y'all, y'all know the enemy is something else. Yeah, something happened that just that fast. I was like, cause he he don't want me to get this stuff out, girl. Uh, Miss Barbara, you know it. But I know what's going. You know, I thought I I put it on like five minutes ago. To be honest with you, what I do and y'all need to do this too. I pray over my ears. I prove I put oil on my head and and of course under my feet because I'm ready. I don't know what somebody cause it could be. I'm gonna tell y'all something. When you anoint it and appoint it, there's always a witch or a warlock. Like they are drawn to the anointing of God. If you don't believe me, keep living. They are drawn to the anointing of God. You understand what I'm saying? So they're always, there's always watching you. You know, the, the Bible says that I find myself trying to do what God wants me to do. And the enemy is always present. That is true. And that's why David said what he said. He said, and you will bless me in the presence of my enemies. Y'all sitting up there worrying about all these enemies. They're supposed to be present. I say, go ahead and pull your chair. Hello. All right, so let me get back. So yeah, y'all see some more oral. I mean, Lord have mercy. I know I put that much, but anyway, now I'm ready for sure. So anyway, let me get to back to the um, what God was saying is that. So let me stay focused. He was saying about death. Death is not bad. Death is to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And it's not just a scripture; it's really real. The Bible says that who knows where the spirit will go upward or downward you come on somebody and all you gotta do is google i don't tell scriptures because i want y'all to get in there and i want y'all to exert the bible yourself come on somebody hallelujah i want you to get up in there but here's the deal so many the, the enemy then came and, and and got people and i have to reiterate everything i said got people saying god why did you take my husband why'd you take my wife why'd you take my mother why'd you take my father why'd you take my sister why did you take my brother my cousin my friend my boyfriend my girlfriend they are they were God's first but not only that you should be rejoicing you know I'm gonna tell a testimony again a short testimony when my mother died I was 27 years old and in case you don't know and some of these testimonies I'm telling publicly for the first time publicly my class know but just the one last night I had never told publicly what had happened in LA and Sacramento and all that and I'm gonna tell you something people of God know when they're getting ready to die so go ahead and, and if somebody tell if you feel something you better go ahead and see him and I don't know why I'm on this subject tonight but I got God got me on it if you feel something in your spirit that you're supposed to go see somebody or call somebody y'all better be obedient because I'm telling you right now I probably would have saw my mother before she died if I listened to a stranger I was a man in Louisiana I was a youth minister I was so busy so busy so busy right and I never forget this stranger walked up to me and said you need to go see your mother and I'm saying I'm going next weekend I'm going to, you know cuz you be thinking people are crazy God's trying to get his attention I keep don't y'all know everything is spiritual y'all keep trying to divide the two we're in this world, but believe it or not, it's everything is a spiritual. Everything is good is of God. Everything bad is of the devil. I don't know why y'all keep trying to divide the two as if we're in a separate entity. <laughs> we're not. The only difference is, you know, and it's going back to the Jesus days. But the only thing is we have this technology. We have cars. But trust me, it's the same devils. It's the same angels. It's the same God. So if you hear somebody say that, y'all better start listening. Because some of you, that's why you have remorse. Another thing, I don't know why God got me on this subject, but I'm going to roll with it. A lot of you have so much unforgiveness against each other. And then when they die, y'all the first ones to the casket. <laughs> I'll tell y'all right now. And I'm serious too. The ones that have a problem with me and family too, don't you come to my funeral with that foolishness. Because I pray that God give me one more breath so I can stand up and say, are you serious? And lay back down. I'm so serious. Don't you dare do it. How dare you? Y'all sit up there and y'all hold on to that stuff. Until that person died. And now you're grieving outside and inside because of the fact you didn't forgive them when you had that chance. I'm seeing it more and more. Every time somebody died. Oh, we loved them, man. That was really my brother. That was really my sister. That Shut up, you fake. You were so prideful that you didn't want to go to them while they were alive and say, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgive you. I love you. No, no, no. Because you want to be a man or you want to be a woman. I'll tell you something about being strong. Being strong is also being sensitive. And understand that you don't have it all together. And that sometimes you make mistakes. And sometimes guess what? You're wrong. And it's okay. Hallelujah. Death is not bad. Death is not bad. God got me on this tonight. Death is not bad. 
But now, how you living? Because now, I hope the preacher don't have to lie at your funeral because you really didn't live that life. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let's be real up in here. You know, I said I wasn't going to say nothing, but I guess I'm just like that. I'm real. Somebody lied to my face today. And I know they're going to see this and then they're going to say, oh, she, yeah, I know you lied. Straight to my face. And I was hurt for a moment. And then I prayed. I said, you know what, God? And he's supposed to be a minister. I'm too much anointing. If I miss it, don't you know the spirit going to catch it? I know when you're lying. And I ain't even mad at you. I ain't even mad at you because that's between you and your God. Hmm. So, let me continue. Death is not bad. So, my mother called me before she died. I hung up the phone. I was in Maine, Louisiana. She was a nurse down here in Louisiana. And I hung up the phone. I said, Mama tripping. I wasn't where I'm at today. I didn't know God the way she knew God. And she said, don't you hang up that phone? Because I just got off of work. I was working 11 to 7. And I, too, was, I, was, I think I was a respiratory therapist at that time. Oh, I Actually, I got grandfathered and I didn't go to school for it. Hallelujah. So, anyway, Mama told me, she said, I'm getting ready to die. And she said, don't you hang up that phone. She said, you're a woman. Take what I'm getting ready to say. She said, you're the one. She said, they're going to turn their back on you. I'm not lying. She told me this 1996 in May. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I think it was May 1st. And um, she said, you're the one. She said, God's calling you to a higher level. And I'm just listening. And I ain't going to lie. I'm just going along with it like, yeah, mom, okay. Mm -hmm. You're a prophet. I mean, everything. She said, I want you to sing at my funeral. I said, yeah, mom. She said, you, you know that song you like, Mahalia Jackson, because I, I love Mahalia Jackson. I said, okay, I'm singing it. <laughs> on May 9th, mama was dead. And let me tell you, I, I, gotta, I don't know why God got me telling these testimonies, but it's probably to help somebody out. Because, you know, I'm telling you, before God come back, God letting us tell it all. So if you did some things or you're going through, he'll tell you to tell your testimony. And it's not to try to make you look good. It's to help somebody out. So long story short, um, the day before Mama died, I was a youth minister. So I always would call her because I didn't know protocol all the way. And that put me in a position that I really wasn't qualified for. But, you know, I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to be a youth minister. And so one of the ladies had threw their, her son out. That was the night before Mama died. And I called Mama. I said, Mama, he's a guy. I said, I don't want nobody to think, you know, I'm doing something I ain't got no business doing. Mama said, let him let him sleep there. He going to need him. And I'm like, she had never said that before. Usually she said, you know, that's out of order. You could get him a hotel or something. But that night she, and so I thought that was strange. I said, I said, now that's not that's not the answer, but I'm going somewhere with this. So he, I don't know why, but he went fill up his car. He said, I gotta go fill up my car. I said, why? He said, I don't know. So I said, okay. I said, and then I said, go get a pizza or whatever. So we sit down, we eat pizza, and all of a sudden, I'm gonna, I read my Bible, and God bring me to Ecclesiastics, a time to live and a time to die. I, I slammed the Bible, and I threw the Bible actually because I felt something. I said something wrong. So I went into bed. And he said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know, something wrong. I felt it. No, God did not tell me, but I felt something. I said, Lord, something wrong. So anyway, I go in the room. And I would say about 1.30 that morning, I woke up and I got scared. I don't know, I just started getting scared. And he was sleeping on the sofa. So I went and I laid beside him on the floor. And he said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know, I just don't want to be alone right now. And I don't act like that because I'm real strong, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so long story short, the phone rang about 3.30. It was my daughter. And before I answered the phone, the phone rang a long time. He said, answer the phone. I said, I'm not answering that phone. He said, answer the phone. Uh, um, prophet is at the time. I said, I'm not answering that phone. He said, answer your phone. I said, I'm not. I got mad. I said, I'm not answering the phone. And so finally, I said, fine. Because I, I felt like I knew something, you know. So I answered the phone. It was my daughter. She said, she gone. And I knew she was talking about ice cream. I was on the second floor. I'm sure they heard me. The whole complex heard me. I screamed with a roar. Because I was so mad. Because I thought this was a game. No. this, this, this I, She just playing. I know no, she told me, but this cannot be real, God. How could you? You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm on God now. I give you my life and you do this? Because what you don't understand, I just, I was 27 years old. And some of you have read my testimony where I tried to kill myself. It was just three months. I was into the ministry, into giving love with God. You take my mother? What kind of game is this? You tell me to come to your kingdom and you take. The very thing that insisted in my life, the only one that loved me, the, hallelujah. I was mad at God. Oh, yes, so I know what it's like. I was mad at how, I don't know what kind of game you're playing, God. But I don't like it. Hold on, because he, he has some more things coming. So then, on my way, now you remember the guy had stayed there. So he drove me back down south 
so I can, you know, see my family and what happened to mom and all that stuff on the way going there. And I'm going to be very transparent, like I always say. I don't care who believe who not. I promise you, I was crying for real. I was just crying, crying. And I heard my mother's voice. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. And I heard her say, I made it. It's your turn. I completely stopped crying. And I got cynical. I was like, you always got to do something first. Because me and her had a little competition thing. In this, I don't know what that was about. but, And I'm not kidding. And to be honest with you, I've seen her several times. <sighs> Y'all ain't ready for that real stuff. So long story short, let's go. So that's May 9th. Buried on May 18th. So I was I had a fiance at that time. His name was Sirocco Green from New York. We was getting married. Now a month after this happened, he writes me this crazy letter. I don't think we're gonna get married. Something's gonna happen. I tear up the letter. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Cause I'm you know, I'm feeling like, okay, I didn't been here with mom just a month ago. What's going on? So I say, I he tripping. You guys, on August 9th, that was what, May, June, July, August, three months on the same day, he got killed in Lafayette, Louisiana. He he had ran out of um, gas and he was crossing over the medium. And an 18 wheeler hit him and drug his my body like, what, 20, 30 miles. He caught on fire. He was burnt beyond recognition. Same day, my mother died May 9th. He got killed August 9th. I really got to say, I, I ain't going to even lie to y'all. I'm going to be so transparent, maybe too transparent. I think I cursed God at that time. I said, how could you? I said, now this is not right. I don't like this. What are you doing? I said, you're taking away everybody that love. I don't get it. And yes, I did. I was 27 years old. I didn't know no better. I did. I burnt the Bible. What? Y'all want me to lie? I think y'all need to hear it because some of y'all acting like that now. I said, I'm not serving you no more. I said, you took two people that mean the most to me. I'm not serving you no more. I'm not doing this. And I never forget God said, yes, you're going to serve me. You're going to serve me with your whole heart. And I'm crying at this time. And I'm losing weight because I ain't eating and I ain't sleeping because I'm like, <laughs> what else could you do to me now? Why did I ask that question? Guess what? September 29th, my grandmother died. Then, the next month, my first cousin who I loved and we were so close, he blew his brains out. I was like, <laughs> I say, I lost it. I, I, I literally lost it. I say, I say, you don't love me, I'm done. I don't want to be a minister. I, I stopped going to church. I, started, I stopped going to church. They couldn't find me. They would come knock. The kids would knock. Every, I wouldn't answer my phone. I had barricaded myself in my apartment. I said, I'm done. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I said, this is crazy. I give you my life and you take everybody? This don't make no sense. Hallelujah. I'm helping somebody tonight. And so finally, I had decided again. I didn't tell nobody because when you're serious, you don't tell nobody. I said, I'm going to kill myself this time. I said, you stopped me before. Because he did. The glory of God came in that room and stopped me from killing myself. I said, but you ain't going to stop me this time. I said, I'm going to kill myself this time. I'm tired. I said, you, you're wearing me out. Physically, mentally. I, I said, my life is just crazy. And I never forget. I didn't even know this guy. This big guy, he was big, big, big. He knocked on my door. He was from Waco, Texas. Everything is true. No exaggeration. He said, the Lord sent me. So I'm looking at him like... Really, okay. He said, No, I'm from Waco, Texas. Told me his name. I'm not gonna say his name. He said, I drove all over from Waco, Texas. I said, Okay, I'm thinking. And he started showing me identification. And he had came with his wife, so he wasn't lying. He said, You're about to kill yourself. And God said, No. And that's when I broke down. I said, What did God want, man? I said, What do God want with me? I said, Because I don't get this. He tell me to say, to, 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 to come to him. And then he take everything around me. I said, What is this about? He said, my sister, apparently you have an anointing, a very heavy anointing that requires everything. And God wanted to allow you to get tested to see if you would break. I said, well, I'm broken. I said, I, I ain't got no more. I ain't got no more. He said, yes, you do. He said, because one thing about the breaking point, it's like the olive. Oh, it's like the olive. He said, well, he's crushing you. He's crushing you. He's crushing you so it'll come out. And you want to know, are you going to still serve him in the midst of this? And I'm telling you, I was like, I don't know if I could do it. If I could serve him and he that took everybody, I ain't got nobody left. What do you want? Now, this was when I was 27. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And he, that man would not leave my house. He stayed there two days, him and his wife. He prayed with me. And he got that suicidal spirit off of me. And I said, well, what do I do now? He said, give it to God. Give your pain to God. 
I said, I said, you know what I did? I cursed God. I burned the Bible. He said, you, you ain't blasphemed the Holy Spirit because that's the only thing you cannot come back from. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I said, but was I bad doing that? He said, no, you were hurting. He said, and from what you're telling me, you're young in the fellowship. He said, you just been in the ministry four months. You don't even know what you're doing. He said, but, and, and he became my mentor, him and his wife. And he said, we, we got you. He said, why do you think I drove all the way from Waco, Texas? He said, I don't know you. He said, I didn't understand what God was saying. He said, some girl, a man in Louisiana needs you. So some people do listen to God. Hallelujah. Because I do that now. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I have drove places and knocked on people's doors and God something. <laughs> they looking at me. But guess what? They let me in because they knew it was God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And so I realized, I said, well, wait a minute. All this was supposed to happen? And I'm supposed to grow from it? Yes. So death is not a bad thing. Because it gives you, it, you got to understand. We all have a day to be born and a day to die. But what matters is those in-between dates, that dash. What are you doing? Because a lot of you, you're doing what you want to do. And then if something happened to you, oh, somebody pray for me, somebody pray for me. Oh, go call, go call pastor, call pap. But yet while you're doing what you're doing, you ain't thinking none of that. So I rededicated my life. And I said, okay, I'm going to do this thing. And there were times when I wanted to give up. There were times when I didn't understand it. There were times when I questioned. Because you were always going through that. It's called, it's, it's called the testing. The testing. The testing. Abraham was tested. Come on, somebody. Joseph was tested. David was tested. You will be tested. So, long story short, I said, okay, I get this. It's his way. It's his show. I ain't running nothing. I am truly a servant. It has to go down the way he wanted to go down. So, case in point. Now we're in this time where you have the enemy using our young people to retaliate. Why well, they killed my boy, I'm going to go kill them. You, you understand what the video is about now? Death is not bad. You're trying to play God. Once you do that, those who live by the sword should die by the sword. Not a sword, i.e. can mean a gun, knife, whatever you take. You have no right to take nobody's life. And so I, I'm going deeper with this. I, I pray that you understand where I'm going with this tonight. Y'all sitting up there getting mad. Well, I'm a revenge. And then you wonder why two weeks later, blah, 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 something has happened right to that person, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Because here's the deal. There is something as seed time and harvest, and we ain't talking about just money. Whatever you reap, you should surely sow. That's why I, I tell people, you better be careful what you say. Be careful what you do and who you do it to. You don't hear what I'm saying. Because, and a lot of people don't understand this, especially this new generation. They don't understand, and, and, and I'm going to just be real with you, and it's not like a fear. You better be careful who you put your mouth on. You better be careful who you come against. You better be careful because God is serious. A lot of people like to downplay the word of God. God is serious, touch not my anointed, and, and hold on. He don't mean just prophet, touch not my anointed. That's anybody that's anointed. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because God will rock your world. Honey, hallelujah, you, you trust me. <laughs> and guess what? Some sometimes he'll show you why he doing what he doing. Why he doing what he doing? Come on, somebody, hallelujah! You don't hear what I say? Death is not bad. Some of you are mad at God. As a matter of fact, my ex fiance. One of the reasons I couldn't marry him, he couldn't get over. God took his mom. He just turned his back, and I couldn't do it. I said, I, I, can't, I can't roll with you like that. You have to forgive God at your time. God bless you. Maybe down the line somebody else could help you with all that and stuff. But they get mad at God because they don't understand why God. And, and I've been there. I just told y'all my story. I, I've been there. I know what it's like when, when you, what you doing, God? Well, well, I don't get this. It'll make you flip out. Hallelujah. But this is the test to see, are you really worthy? Because I put something in you. And I want to know, can you carry it? Hallelujah. Because guess what? You can't carry what you can't go through. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. A lot of people don't even understand why I'm so passionate. And why I'm so, uh. Because I've been through hell. And when you've been through hell. But he showed you heaven. You're powerful. Ain't even of your own. Father God, hallelujah. That's why I don't play. It ain't, this ain't me. I ain't built me. Hallelujah. He did it. So if you got a problem, go to him. He's the one that builds you. It's called spiritual surgery. He takes it in. He takes it out. He takes it in. He takes it out. He molds you. He allows this. He allows that. Yeah. And then in the end he say, you ready now. And then hold on. But you're still incomplete. Because what you'll be doing 
is doing and dealing. What do you mean, apostle? You'll be doing ministry and still dealing with some stuff. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I just said. You'll be doing ministry and still dealing with some stuff. Death is not bad. Because there's a spiritual death. And I'm going to talk about that as well. Some of you are spiritually dead. You used to love God. You used to serve God. Something happened. Something didn't happen. I'm mad at God. I ain't serving God. So then you start drinking. Start smoking. Start sexing. Start, uh. Nah. That stuff feel good for a moment. But after it's over with. You still got to deal with, uh. That stuff. So. You're playing yourself, technically, right? How do you deal with an apostle? Oh, hold on. You open this Bible, and you get in that Bible, and you fall in love with that Bible, and you fall in love with the Word of God, and you put your trust in God as if you did a man or a woman. I said, God, I love you. I don't understand this. This hurts. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, but I trust you, God. You ain't never lied to me. I trust you, God, because you keep me. That's what I read in this Bible. He ain't never lied. And he ain't never, he ain't never. He, the Bible said he'll never leave or forsake you. He ain't never did it. He, he, he never said it wasn't going to be easy. Mm. He never said you wouldn't hurt. Mm. He never said you wouldn't cry. Mm. He never said you wouldn't want to kill yourself. He never said all that. As a matter of fact, he says that endure hardness as a good soldier. So that lets you know it's going to be some hard time, soldier. He said, but endure it. People don't want to endure no more. People want to feel good. We live in a feel-good society. I want to feel good I, instead of being good. Y'all know it's the truth. Being politically correct, and like I said last night, spiritually wrong, death is not bad. But we do have to talk to our youth. Y'all sitting up there playing God, and now you got a mark on your life, just like Cain did. When Cain killed Abel, God put a mark on him. To whoever should find him should kill him. Mm. When you kill somebody, don't you know there's a mark on your life as well? Young people, young people, you're not invincible. As a matter of fact, God forgive me, I hate to say it, the span of a youth a day is, some of y'all not making it to 22. The devil is a lie. And y'all trying to kill adults. Then we have a spirit that's killing babies. Y'all don't notice that? Come on, somebody. I'm calling out the, the Balao spirit. It's a murdering spirit. Y'all better start praying over your city, your towns, your children, your house. This ain't no game. Some of y'all think it's a game. This is a spiritual war. And no, you can get all the guns in the world. You can't stop Balao, but by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And with authority. Because if you're doing stuff, then you taint it and you ain't got no power. And that's what I have against people. I, I'm not, I love everybody. But when you're playing with this, I got something. Because you don't know. God needs you. You don't know when God. That's why I stay I, I stay pure. I try to stay pure. I'm not perfect. But I try to stay, you know, because I don't know when God's going to shift. When he's going to need me to, to speak, to pray, to lay hands, to command, to cast out. I'm not my own. Hallelujah. And some of you are so selfish. You want to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it. And then you wonder why. Because God will whip you. Oh, I like God won't whip you. Yes, he's a loving God and, and, and all this grace, 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 but God will whip you too. You can play crazy if you want to. God will whip you too. Again, death is not bad. Come on, somebody. Death is not bad. Enoch. Enoch didn't even die. Y'all need to Google Enoch. Enoch was in a chariot. Y'all know I prayed for that. I said, God, can I be like Enoch? I don't have to die. That way I can just be waving. I said, hey, bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> I'm really serious. I really did pray that. <laughs> and I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I would, I would, I'll be telling y'all, bye, see y'all later. <laughs> However, God does what he does when he does what he does. Death is not bad. Are you prepared? Are you truly prepared in this hour? Because God is calling his people home. And I'm going to tell you why. New world order is getting ready to come. Martial law, a lot of you, a lot of people that have passed on, God knew they wouldn't survive. God knew they would take the mark. I'm just being honest with you. And so God said, I better call them now. So y'all sitting up there feeling sorry for them. <laughs> they good, honey. You better pray for us. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. You better pray for us. Hallelujah. Still, death is not bad. So forgive people. Forgive. 
And if someone is living now, you parents, forgive that child. Let that child come home. Love that child. Forgive. Yes, there's a process of forgiveness, but forgive. Children, go back home to your parents. Quit trying to. It's another thing. The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father. Some of y'all, y'all life is getting cut on purpose. That stuff not. That stuff is not funny. It really happens. God will allow your life to be taken. He means what he say and he say what he means when it comes to the spiritual things of God. But people don't like that. They don't like that. They don't like that. Because we live in a world where people want to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it, and why they want to do it. But I'm here to tell you, there's a consequence for everything you do and everything you say. And if you don't believe me, again, keep living. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So we're in a time to pray, pray, pray. So that's all on this video. I'll try to do... I've never done the ones that he told me to do like last week because and and I was gonna do some more then and, and I may I may jump on here again I gotta breathe because it's almost like you're ministering for real you get whew, the anointing keeps is flowing but I'm telling you right now we're in a serious critical time I pray that you open your eyes and open them Bibles too pray fast pray fast I'm serious so God bless you this is Apostle Deanna Dixon and again death is not bad. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon, Real Life Soldiers, because that is who you are.